Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My, my, my name is David Adams, and on behalf of the um, tr Board of Trustees of the Monta Vista Unitarian Universalist Congregation, I want to welcome everybody um, on this last day of July, right? I think that's right. Where's the summer going? Um, so before we begin the formal part of our uh, worship service, I want to make just two brief announcements. Um, the first is to see the weekly Thursday uh, email with a comprehensive list of things that are going on at MVUUC. Uh, the other announcement is to uh, remind everyone again um, of, the, uh, of the upcoming event that will take place on Saturday, August 20th uh, at 4 o'clock, uh, more or less, here in the sanctuary. And that uh, is when we will be celebrating the 70th birthday of our congregation. And uh, there will be activities, exhibits, presentations. We'll learn something about the history of MVUUC. Um, and uh, the board is in the process of inviting um, officials from the city of Montclair, uh, clergy uh, from other uh, uh, churches in the area, other UU ministers uh, as well, and other dignitaries. Um, there will be food and music, uh, courtesy of Don Moore. Um, so watch for an opportunity to RSVP, uh, and that will be uh, going out soon. And if you're available to help, uh, please see uh, Debbie Skirto or um, contact Brenda in the office. Uh, we can certainly need your help. And lastly, we have some funding uh, for this event, uh, but we uh, will need uh, help covering the total cost of the party. So there is a delightful box right here made by our, by our own Debbie Skirto uh, for donations, and I'll make one right now. Look at that. Uh, so, um, spread the word, August 20th, uh, from 4 to 8 here in the uh, sanctuary. Thank you. Wow, thank you. It is so good to have you here. I love choir Sundays. <laughs> 
Good morning, everyone, here in the sanctuary, and also a warm hello to those of us that are joining us on Zoom. And I want to remind everyone of our tr long tradition of ringing the bowl to begin our service. We ring it once for those who have come before. The Tongva and other native peoples who were the original stewards of this land and called it home long ago. We also honor our ancestors and the founding members of this congregation who imagined and formed it now 70 years ago. We ring it once for those of us here and now. For our members and friends, our visitors, our staff, and our extended UU family, all who hold, care, and grow this beloved community that we know as ours. And we ring it for those who will come. For all who will find belonging here with us and call MVUUC their spiritual home in the days ahead. I'd like to invite John Fisher up to light our chalice. Our time together in worship is intimately connected with our daily lives. We light our chalice flame as a symbol of that connection, a bond that represents our shared light of hope and witness. Please hear the words of Barbara Peskin. In this familiar place, listen, to the sounds of breathing and creaking chairs, shuffling feet, clearing throats, and sigh all around. Know that each breath, movement, and glance meant for you or intercepted holds life within it. These are signs that we choose to be in this company, and we have things to say to one another. Things not said yet, but in each other's presence, still trembling behind our heart's door. These doors closed, but unlocked, each silent thing waiting on the threshold between unknowing and knowing, between being hidden and being known. Find the silence among these people and listen to it all. The breathing, sighs, movement, holding back, Hear the tears that have not yet reached their eyes, and perhaps they are your own. Hear also the laughter building deep where joy abides despite everything. Listen, rejoice, and say amen. I invite everyone to stand now as you're comfortable, in body or spirit or both. We're going to sing Spirit of Life together. In the hymnal, it's hymn number one two three you might find the music in the back cover of your hymnal where the lyrics are in spanish as well and for those of you as home at home they'll also be on the screen
stand as we read our covenant aloud. I'll wait for it to appear on the screen. Thank you, Jarius. Love is the doctrine of this congregation. The quest of truth, its sacrament, and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve the world in fellowship, to the end that all souls shall grow in harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other. Beautiful, thank you. Please be seated. It is time for our wisdom tale. I'd like to invite Robert, our Director of Lifespan Religious Exploration, up for our story, which will be called Good People Everywhere. May it be so. Hello, everybody. Today in neighborhoods all over the world, millions and millions of people are doing very good things. Today, carpenters are building fences and houses and repairing homes that have been damaged by storms. Today, moms and dads are cooking dinners for their families and cooks are working in kitchens, making meals for people who don't have homes. Doctors and midwives are delivering babies and gently passing them into eager arms of their parents. Teachers are teaching math, spelling, and reading skills. Musicians are opening their hearts and playing beautiful music. And dancers are leaping across dance floors, practicing performances that will bring joy to their friends, their families, and their communities. Today, people are planting seeds picking fruits and vegetables and driving them to grocery stores all around the world so that you can have a ripe, juicy orange in your lunch. Today, a young child is trying her very best to do well on her science test, and a teenage boy is helping a young child who is sad and lonely. Today, a first grade boy is helping a friend who has a skinned knee and a big sister is holding her baby brother while her mother runs across the street to help a neighbor. Today, millions and millions of people will do very good things. And so will you. I wonder what you will do. Thank you. And now if the children can come up and grab the um, children's chalice, we can be sung out to our classes. Our offering message today begins with the words of Rebecca Parker in reading number 47 in our Lifting Our Voices publication. That's the pink hymnal. It's all filled with just readings. It's wonderful. Reverend Rebecca writes, your gifts, whatever you discover them to be, can be used to bless or to curse the world. The mind's power, the strength of your hands, the reaches of the heart, the gift of speaking, listening, imagining, seeing, waiting. Any of these gifts can draw down the prison door, can hoard bread, can abandon the poor and obscure what is holy and comply with injustice or withhold love. Or any of these can serve to feed the hungry, to bind up wounds, to welcome the stranger, to praise what is sacred, to do the work of justice or to offer love. You must answer this question. What will you do with your gifts? 
May we choose to bless the world. And thank you for your kind and generous gifts that are given in many ways throughout these days that we share as a spiritual community. Our good stewardship reflects the rootedness in our UU faith and our growth that brings healing to one another and the world. I invite those of you here in the sanctuary today to bring your offerings and gifts of non-perishable donations for the Beta Center to our altar. Those joining us online in our Zoom sanctuary might find the link to donate online in the chat box. Thanks, Jarius. And it is with grateful appreciation that our offerings will now be given and received. Thank you, Lily, and thank you, everyone. In this congregation, we enjoy sharing the things in our lives that bring us both delight and disappointment. Here is where we share our lives together at the most tender sometimes, and also the most joyful, the things we really want to share. Um, of course, we ask that everyone keep in their minds and in their, in their prayers everything that we need to do for our 70th anniversary, birthday, 70 years, yay. Um, I don't have any of the little papers from today's congregation. If anyone wanted to put something in the chat that you'd like announced, please put a joy. Okay, looks like um, we don't have anything in there. And I invite you to join me in a spirit of prayer and meditation now as we breathe together. Inhale and out, connecting our hearts, our minds, and our very lives, lighting up the web that binds us to all beings in these trying and tender times. We are grateful for this community of love and connection May these unusual days remind us of how much we really mean to one another. We join our breath to become aware of love more fully and to see beyond what we believe we know toward greater awakening, 
connection, and growth. May our love shine forth from this place and from the sanctuary of each of our hearts so that others may know that acceptance, community, and love are the gifts that we bring. With deep gratitude for life and for the chance we always have to choose love again and always, we connect with the spirit of life in each other, with all others, with every animal, tree, and sentient being, and with the stars. Amen. I invite you to stay seated as we sing our pastoral hymn this morning. It's in Singing the Journey, the Teal Hymnal, right near the front, number 1002. It's Comfort Me. There are five verses. Let's sing that together. And sing it, sing it as a prayer. I have another joy. Let's put it in reverse for a minute. And everyone that's here in the sanctuary, and maybe Bob can move the camera too, let's celebrate that our fans look incredible right now. They had about 12 years worth of insects living in those globes. <laughs> and bless their hearts, they've all been sent on to their next lives. But we have new light bulbs that are much brighter. And look how clean and great they look. So big thanks to Bob and George for fixing that. Our reading today is titled, To All Get Free Together. And it's adapted from a reading that's on the website, UUA website, and it's written by Chris Kress. To become a beloved community, the key question for us is not, how do we get a mix of people to join our community that we have here? It's instead, how do we make an enduring, spiritually rooted commitment 
to uprooting the barriers that are here within our community and take part in ongoing collective action in service to society and to our future. Our goal is to build and be part of beloved community, united to end structural oppression and unleash collective liberation into our faith communities, our schools, our neighborhoods, our workplaces, and throughout society. Our goal is to join hands across divisions of politics, racism, economic disparity, in our faith and in our communities, and affirm the humanity of each and every sentient being. Our goal is to join our hearts and minds to the task of transforming white supremacy in every worldview, policy, law, institution, and governing body of our society. For this community to be a place of healing, a place of nourishment, a spiritual home that advances economic, racial, and gender justice. Our goal is for our faith community to be a part of the continual process of working as Unitarian Universalists within the wider movement to end oppression of all kinds in society. For our beloved communities, to raise our children of all backgrounds, to be freedom fighters and practitioners of liberation values. Our goal is for our faith community to be spiritually alive, learning from and contributing to liberation cultures and legacies, for our faith communities to be welcoming homes for people of all colors, sexualities, ages, classes, abilities, genders, and citizenship status. May this beloved community be an active agent in the world to help us all get free together. Yesterday morning, I officiated a memorial service at Troop UU Church in Pasadena. Reverend Tara Landers is the pastor there and she asked if I could fill in while she was away. Troop Church and the H is silent, like it is in Thomas. Um, it was my home congregation when I first moved from New Jersey to be near my son here in Southern California in September of 2012, following the death of my husband, Robert. Within the first week, I checked the internet to find Unitarian Universalist congregations, and Troop was the closest church that had an online presence that Google picked up and recommended, and I attended that Sunday. When I arrived at Troop, I was warmly welcomed by their congregation of 20 members who were celebrating Reverend Tara's arrival just two weeks before. They had a fierce love for their congregation and they're willing to do all that they could to keep it open and to help it to begin growing again. Part of that plan included hiring Reverend Tara at halftime and learning all that they could about how to stabilize themselves after losses and to become a beloved community again. With my life in a bit of a shamble and a heart still full of grief, I was grateful to have weathered my own storm and grateful to land in their pews like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Within a very short time, I knew I had found a place that was safe and a community that offered me a warm welcome and a deep sense of belonging. Their welcome was exactly what I needed, and it convinced me that I had made a good choice and that everything was going to work out and that I was going to be okay. I knew that it was more than coincidence that a random Google search sent me to Troop. And I began to dig into congregational life, and Reverend Tara engaged me with shared ministry of their recovering church. It was nearly 10 months later that a very noteworthy life event unfolded when this very handsome gentleman named George Yanoki made his life choice to attend Troop also after he moved from South Pasadena after the sudden death of his partner that left him in a similar place of grief and loss. We met there in June of 2013, 
and were married by Reverend Tara in the sanctuary at True the following January. At that time, the UUA had not yet been restructured into regions, and I became very active with the Pacific Southwest District, working to plan and facilitate our district assemblies that were held each April. It was at the district assembly at First Church in San Diego where I met Tom and Carolyn Owen Toll. I see Ben shaking his head, yes. The Owen Tolls are a married couple that co-ministered First Church and have served our faith for many, many years. They're well-respected, long-time pillars of our UU ministry and have attained a place of deep respect for their visionary leadership and their kind prophetic voice. Tom is the author of several books on Unitarian Universalism, and there's not a bad one in the bunch. I recommend every one. Each book is filled with positive wisdom and warm knowledge that encourages his readers to love, support, and grow our faith. His book on congregational growth is one that I've been digging into a lot lately, and it's overflowing with wonderful information that brings both encouragement and accountability to keep us on our path to grow and strengthen. It's titled Growing a Beloved Community, 12 Hallmarks of a Healthy Congregation. And it's filled with guidance and suggestions that are timeless. It's still very important to our congregations all these years after it was published in 2004. So let's open up the first six of these 12 hallmarks today and try them on for size. I hope to hear from you about the things that ring true for you that you hear, and they seem important for us to look at a little deeper. And also the aspects of healthy congregations that you think we've nearly mastered. The first, I kind of agree with, we've got this one. Occupy holy ground. The author quotes Felix Adler to remind us that the place where we meet to seek the highest is holy ground. And while some resist the language of holiness or religious phrasing, the meaning of the word holy is actually easily accepted when we define it as something that is set apart for a special purpose. Occupying holy ground is as simple as creating and honoring our mission statement and living into it with the way we are in relationship as a community that serves the world. Doing just that, occupying holy ground in each of our exchanges with one another, according to Owen Toll, seldom efficient, but oh so sustaining. Our capacity to reach for our highest among the vast theological differences among our pagan, humanist, and mystic members, just to name a few, gives us high regard for the ways that we regard one another. We are charged to integrate our behaviors and beliefs within our communal faith that inspires maturity and health in the ways that we covenant with one another and occupy holy ground. We draw on the wisdom of many faith resources to ground ourselves and to learn to expand all of our souls together. The author claims that the best place to do this is in the bosom of our local tribe of free faith. And I think that's a pretty accurate claim. The second, welcome all souls. Our mission as Unitarian Universalists is to offer an open door to all souls and to welcome in those who choose to stay and make this community their spiritual home. Our author says that growth happens when we dare to be what Theodore Parker called a wide place as well as a warm one. I'm reminded of our installation ceremony in March where we sang a song that I learned in seminary called Draw the Circle Wide. Being a mature congregation begins with that hospitality mindset that the circles we draw are not to leave anyone out, but wide and open to make a way where it seems that there is no way. May we learn to be even more genuinely expansive while holding the tender truth that people are prone to trip up and churches are capable of being off base too. 
but yet may we welcome all souls with open arms and always be a wide and warm place for those who will come. A third hallmark of health is care for your own. Perhaps our most important ministry, especially when we're working to live into our charge to be rooted and growing is hospitality. Most often we think of that as the ministry that we offer to our guests and our visitors, but the care of our own is an important part of it. When all is done well, the guests and visitors can feel that and they see it and they're drawn in by it. And they're drawn in to us because they see the respectful way we treat each other. It's a tender topic, but it's essential to our right relations and our covenant together. It does happen that my ministry involves the tending of wounds that were caused by harm that was innocently or not brought to another one in our own church family. So let's always keep aware and stay curious and careful not to bring harm when we're expressing strong opinions or we have energized frustrations. Hospitality is truly a verb in healthy congregations and caring for our own is one of the hallmarks that we can always improve and one that we might work on together. We know that Debbie and Terry could use a lot more help with the physical hospitality that they offer each of us every Sunday and for all of our special events. We're so grateful for that. And maybe you have been sensing a little nudge to help out with that. Please consider yourself nudged. <laughs> Each and every one of us is responsible to keep a focus on hospitality before us as our goal. It's important to always keep both our inward care and our outreaching compassion and balance. Let's use the signage for Southern California's most famous burger joint as we remind it, let it remind us to always be doing our work that is inside and out. And let that in and out also be truly grounded in kindness and a sense of care for our own. It's simply a muscle that we need to work to keep it a little bit stronger. Our fourth hallmark of health is giving everyone a voice. Tom Owen Toll begins his teaching on this aspect of a healthy congregation with a quote by Molly Ivins that names how hard real democracy is. She writes, democracy requires rather a large tolerance for confusion and a secret relish for dissent. Ours is not a good country for those who like unanimity and uniformity. Revisiting this quote, I was reminded of a conversation with Megan Gallagher this week, where she was sharing that when her fifth grade students were studying government, they were more in favor of any other form of government than democracy because of how complex it could be and live and difficult to live out well. But in our congregations, it becomes even more complex when we mix in the aspects of vast beliefs and unique traditions from our families of origin. Gentle reminders to revisit decisions and procedures that unfolded in ways that were perhaps less than democratic help us to find our way towards healing and hearing the voice of each and every person. Staying curious about our own perceptions and allowing ourselves the space we need to explore our thinking and that can help us to see new ways that we can expand our own understanding holy listening and discernment of how we sound when we speak is a helpful way for all of us to work in harmony together. The author shared the text of First Church's self-identity that's published in their weekly order of service. I found it charming and it might be something we'd want to write up for ourselves and share with our guests in the future. The one for First Church, First Church reads, or it did in 2004, I'm not sure if they still do this, but you can find out. Their order of service says, 
We envision the members and friends of First Church as pilgrims traveling on life's journey together, creating shared ministry through which we can grow our souls in ways truthful to ourselves, caring for others and sustaining the planet. But let's not hesitate to remind ourselves and one another how important every voice is to our wholeness. Hallmark number five is encourage unity within diversity. While no congregation does this perfectly, I see a great deal of meaningful history and also recent growth in this area. Monta Vista is well known all across our tradition as being the one congregation that has a large and healthy pagan population that draws members from the church and also serves those outside of our congregation. While noting that Reverend Tom's book was written in 2004, before we began to acknowledge that racism had been denied for far too long, he also included quite a bit of helpful advice on creating a multicultural legacy. He reminds us that authentic diversity is not a project, but instead it's our way of being and it's the way we do religion. He asks, can we be different without growing alienated? And can we be diverse without being divisive? Let's be asking ourselves these questions. And our last characteristic for this week is to look at balance of justice and joy. This aspect of congregational health seems unfair to examine in these days that we're in right now. Justice and joy are the very lifeblood of this congregation when we're running full steam ahead. But with the weight of enormous change that has come, and how these times are just asking so much of us, individually and communally. Our balance of joy and justice is a work that continues to call us onward, while at the same time should not be evaluated any more deeply than it is admired. We know a resurgence of passion for justice work is simmering here. And we will be flowing more freely from, and it will be flowing mo more freely from us in the future into the world. We are a congregation of service, watching the events of the world with eyes of compassion and stepping forward to occupy the tender places on holy ground, welcoming all souls, caring for our own hearing everyone's voice as we encourage unity and diversity with a balanced atmosphere of joy and justice. We are so very fortunate to have our belonging in this faith that both calls us to loving service and requires us to grow our souls. We are blessed indeed. Let's close with these words from John Buren's. Blessed are you who know that the work of this church is the transformation of society, who have a vision of beloved community that transcends the present, and who do not shrink from controversy, sacrifice, or change. Blessed are you indeed. May it be so. Amen and blessed be. John, if you would come forward and extinguish our chalice, I invite everyone, let's uh, recite our extinguishing words in the order of service. They come from Lifting Our Voices, number 57 by Martha Capo. Into our world we entrust our spirits. May the strength we have gained in this communal hour sustain us as we resume the work that is in hand. So let us go and be peacemakers and community builders on the earth.